All right, in today's video, we're gonna be uh, working on some motion tracking and we're gonna need a video clip. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into After Effects and let's import our video file. So let's go to File, Import, File, and we'll just uh, grab our video file and we'll import that. And what we're gonna be doing today is logo replacement. This could be done for any number of reasons. Today we're going to be doing it for legal reasons. So the back of our laptop that we have in the shot has an Apple logo on it and we need to replace that. So let's drag our video down into the new comp and that's going to create a composition with the same settings as our video was shot in. So now that we have it in our timeline, let's kind of scrub through here and just kind of see what we have going on. This is what our video looks like in its current form, just raw footage. And uh, you can see that we have a little bit of um, camera shake happening. And then also what we want to do is we want to replace the entire back of this laptop here so we can get rid of this logo. Let's trim down this comp. So I don't want to do the full 16 seconds. I'm probably just looking at doing like the first five seconds or so. So we'll kind of scrub through. I think I want to just stop right about here where he puts his hand this chin right here. This looks fine. Maybe we'll go forward a few frames. Just make it an even six seconds. And if you right click on this uh, gray bar right here, you can choose trim comp to work area. And that's actually going to trim your comp. In order for us to motion track the shot, we need to double click on our footage, which is going to open it in our layer settings, okay? Uh, which is different from our composition. So this is just the layer. And you can see, we can see the full duration of our video here. And we have it trimmed here at six seconds. And you can come in here and you can edit things as you want. But for right now, what we're gonna be doing is tracking um, this, this laptop, okay? So to do that, we need to go to Window. We're gonna go down here to the Tracker, which it looks like we have it open already. So we can kind of scroll down over here and yep, there it is. So we have our Tracker controls open. And we'll just kind of make sure we can see the full window here. Um, and if you don't have it or you don't see it, you can always come into Window and choose Tracker. Now that we are in our layer settings and we have our Tracker window open, what we're going to do is we're going to choose the type of tracking we want to do. I want to track the motion. Track type, we want to choose um, Perspective Corner Pin. Okay, And you'll notice that when I choose that, uh, my tracker point is going to go from one point to four points. And if I kind of zoom in here, you can see what I'm talking about. What we can do is we can actually set these, these four pins right here on the four corners of our laptop, and it will track the motion, but it'll also kind of track the perspective as well. Set this up a little bit. And uh, I guess I should kind of explain um, how these tracker pins work. So you have three sections here. You have uh, you have the actual corner, okay, so that's going to be the corner of whatever it is we're tracking, all right, and then we have this inside frame, which is what we are actually tracking. So that's the section that After Effects is going to be looking at, and it's going to be trying to match it up frame by frame, and then the outer square is the search area. So as each frame kind of progresses, um, it's going to search this larger area for this section, and then it's going to track it. Let's kind of zoom out here a little bit. I suppose I should explain that a little further. So you might be wondering why you wouldn't want to make this outer square a little, like, much larger. And the reason is because the larger it is, the more variation you're going to get in your track. And because it has a larger area, not only do you have more chances of it to find something similar in a totally different area, but you also are searching a larger area. So it's gonna take longer for your track to render out. So you wanna get this square large enough so that it can actually follow your, your track point, but also small enough so that it doesn't take forever. And what we're looking for when we set these tracker points is we're looking for something that's kind of high contrast um, that we can track that's also on the same plane as what we're trying to track. Um, let's kind of zoom in here on this corner. So if you kind of roll your, your mouse wheel in, you can kind of scroll and zoom in. 
And uh, what we want to do is we want to track uh, right, I think right about here, this, this kind of corner here, that looks good. Um, but that doesn't match up perfectly with the corner, the edge of our laptop here. So um, what we can do is if you mouse over, you'll see like right as you mouse over that little crosshair, you're going to get something that's different. And you can actually change the point, the, uh, these corner pins, different from what we're actually tracking. We'll do something similar to that. So this looks pretty good. I don't think we need to have such a large search area. change this down to right about there. So I'm kind of matching it up to the edge of our laptop here and here so we get that perspective. So that looks pretty good. Make this a little smaller. And then we'll move this right here. Okay, so this one zoom out just a little bit. This one is a little bit more interesting. We have this kind of sticker right here with this very um, hard contrasting area inside of it. So what we might actually do is we might pull our track point down. We might track this, uh, this corner right here, but then we'll pull our perspective up. And this is really helpful if you ever have an instance where, uh, you know, maybe something was obstructing uh, one of the corners or something, you could track something on the same plane, but then change the, uh, the actual corner pin. So um, we'll make this a little smaller, and then we'll make the search area a little smaller as well. So you can set this up from any point in your video, and you can either analyze forward um, or you can analyze backward. And then there's also analyze back one frame and forward one frame right here on your, on your tracker menu. So we'll just put this at the very last frame and we'll analyze backward. And it's finished with our tracking data here. So you can kind of see that it has tracked all four of these points and they've all moved around quite a bit from the beginning of our, of our shot here. So I'm still in my layer window and I wanna go back to my composition, all right? Because we need a target to kind of send this tracker data to. And we don't wanna send it to our video File. We want to send this to a different file. Um, so we'll go back to our composition here, and inside of our composition, we'll go layer, new, and this time we're going to create a new solid. Okay, and I'm just going to use the eyedropper to kind of pick out a color here that's pretty similar. Uh, you know, you can pick, make this any color you want, but I'm just going to kind of eyedropper this color here off the back. And we'll rename this uh, laptop solid. And choose OK. And that has created uh, this. And if we go back to our layer and we go back to our tracker menu over here, select our video layer. And if you kind of go down here to where it says edit target, in the edit target, we're going to choose this drop down and we're going to choose the laptop solid okay and we're going to choose okay and when you're happy with that we're going to choose apply and what that's going to do is it's going to add all of our tracker data to this solid so if i kind of pull this up here you can see that everything has been added to the solid layer right here all this data and it's even added a corner pin effect which is going to trim the solid and kind of fit it into the right perspective for the back of the laptop. What's really interesting, what we can do with it at this point is we can pre-compose this layer. So if we right click on this and choose pre-compose, so make sure that you are pre-composing only the solid layer. So we want to select the solid layer, choose pre-compose. We're gonna name this laptop logo this time. And we want to leave all of our attributes inside of this comp. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't want to change our corner pin effect. We don't want to send it into the pre-comp with the solid. Otherwise, it's just going to be a solid gray color covering our video. So we'll choose OK. 
and it's going to open up that pre-comp and you can see this is our solid and if we go back to our video comp it has dropped it in there and we have this pre-composed layer but now that we have it pre-composed we can start to edit this and start adding things to it we've kind of covered up that logo but now I want to add in my own logo so we're gonna go back to our logo comp and we're gonna to go to file import and I've got this uh, lion logo here and we're gonna use that today so I'm gonna drop that into the project panel and we'll just drag that onto our timeline reorder the layers so that it is in front and I want to scale this up a little bit so I don't know let's go with uh, something right about right about there we'll just say 350 even I want to get rid of this white background now if you have a logo that you've created in Illustrator and it is a vector graphic then you probably won't have this white background but there is a trick that I'm going to show you if you do have a logo that has a white background on it like this like let's say it's a, a PDF or a JPEG or something um, what we can do is we can click on this these uh, these three buttons down here and if you click on the middle one that's gonna open up your transfer controls for each layer and right now this layer is set to normal transfer mode but if we go and we change it to multiply that transfer mode is going to get rid of all the lighter colors and it's only going to keep the darker colors so we're kind of left with something that looks like this now if we go back to our comp with our video you can see that it has dropped our logo on the back of the laptop and it also has the perspective of you know it looks correct so now we do still have some kind of harsher edges here and that's something that we can address by coming in here and we can click on our solid layer and we will just create a mask around the edges um, and then I'll do the same thing I want to create a mask because I don't want to see these white uh, edges for the logo so I'm going to create a mask around that as well and what we can do is for the solid layer I'm just going to kind of feather the edge of my mask a little bit so I'm going to kind of feather that and we'll kind of jump back in our comp and you can see that looks pretty good but we're getting something kind of weird happening here with that uh, this little sticker so what we can do is we will just make our mask a little smaller by clicking on this corner pin this corner pin and we'll just kind of drag that over a little bit all right so that's looking pretty good um, and you can go in and you can always color correct this and make this look really nice and uh, you know seamless but we're not going to get into that today um, I just want to show you how to track the motion for something like this where you want to replace a sign and you could use this for like sign replacement license plates on cars um, you could add a blur effect to somebody's face um, you could do all sorts of things with this it's really helpful um, and it's really a good good tool to have in, in your skill set. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, quick rendered this, and I'll kind of play this and let you see what this looks like now that we have it all finished up. And as you can see, our logo and our solid are kind of moving around with that laptop, and it looks like it's actually there.